Okay. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Personal finance expert and MeVest founder Leslie Ann Scorgi joining us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, a recent article of yours in The Star discusses your week-long detox spending challenges, something you have taught to thousands of Canadians. And just imagine you turned the taps off of spending for seven whole days. And it's kind of like, um, you know, if you were detoxing from alcohol or chocolate or trying to get on like a fitness tr uh, track for the 2024 year. I like to think of the spending detox in a similar fashion, applying some discipline. I think there are so many benefits that you get from uh, just reflecting for a week on your habits and your impulses. When you go to take out your card to tap for something and you realize like, no, I'm doing this challenge. I can't do it. Like pay attention to how you're feeling. There are so many ways to fill your wallet and fill your money mindset with good things through a detox. It's amazing what you can learn when you make a conscious effort to be self-aware. And you've been doing this every January for like about a decade, right? Yeah, that's right. And last year when I did it, I, I was able to sock away $800 in the course of seven days. And it was a combination of purging some things, not buying anything. And every time I went to potentially buy something, I would e-transfer that money into my savings account. So I've had great success with it. I've also, uh, like you mentioned before, I've taught this spending challenge, no spending challenge, this detox to thousands of people. And there are so many reasons why it's so good, but I, you know, I think of what we're heading into this year in 2024, like I think a lot of people are craving to be like reignited with some passion and some excitement about their gear, about their finances. And I think this is uh, maybe going to get you there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, before we get to some of, of the steps here, there was a, I wanted to touch on this because you talked about it in the piece. And I thought this was interesting. A couple of years ago, you found that you had picked up a, a bad habit of comparing yourself to other parents in your neighborhood. So what did you do to interrupt that? Yeah, it was. So during my spending detox, after um, my second was born, I was, you know, I was finding myself in this position where I was like comparing what other families were doing, what they had, how I was feeling. And it was a super bad habit. Honestly, I think when I was, it was in, in the pandemic as well. A lot of people were, you know, social distancing at the park, but looking and like making assumptions. My spending detox offered an opportunity to pause on that thinking. And when I paused and I interrupted this comparison pattern, it was like, wow, I can stop doing that today. Wow, I don't have to feel bad about how, how I am as, as a new mom. Um, and it was just like this incredible opportunity. And I, I really, I always say this, like when you go through no, no spending challenge, those kinds of nuggets of wisdom about yourself, like just as a human, they will surface if you allow them to surface and give yourself that pause. So that's kind of what happened to me. And it was a good thing. Like I was able to stop it almost immediately and have healthy conversations, make a smoothie, go for a walk, like yeah. just do something better for myself. Good for you. And that self-awareness uh, coming in, in handy once again. So the, the no spending challenge, first step, do the challenge for one solid week, seven days. You've, you've tried it longer. You've tried it shorter. Seven days was uh, the perfect amount of time. Yeah, it does feel like the right amount of time. I've tried it for five. I've tried it for 30 and I've actually taught both versions of that. And I keep coming back to seven days. Five is just not long enough. Five days is like, you're not getting that transformation. You're not getting that excitement. And you're certainly not getting enough observation and opportunity to save. 30 days is a grind. Way too long. You just can't keep motivated to do it for that long. I've done it before. There's incredible results. Like I had a student who did the challenge with me for the five days and, and she really knocked it out of the park. Like she, she socked away almost $3,000 in the course of the five day period. 
but I think that was a bit of an anomaly. I think most of my students, when they do it for a week, they're socking away anywhere between, you know, 200 and and $600 over the course of that week. And that's a good amount of money. Imagine you could put that on your holiday bills that are rolling in. Yeah, exactly. This is about the the time of year where everybody's getting their credit card bills, right? From uh, the holidays and saying, mm-hmm. I could use a few extra bucks. So step one, uh, do the challenge for one solid week, seven days. Step two, commit to no spending on anything non-essential. You got to really live by that. That's right. So it's like non-essentials, non-essentials are, are totally done. And if you're having trouble determining what a non-essential is, like go back to the basics here, food, clothing, shelter, Those are the basics. Those are essentials. Non-essentials are, you know, the takeout and uh, maybe the coffees or even the memberships that you're signed up for that you're not actually using. Those are non-essentials. So you're going to turn, turn the taps on off of all of that. Yeah. Yeah. As step three, whatever you might've spent, as you talked about, transfer that amount of money into your savings account. And and step four, I think, is uh, something very important to keep in mind. You got to keep paying your bills. Those, That's right. It those is... don't count here. The, those are essential. That's right. Like, if this is not a payment holiday and you are not hearing <laughs> Leslie Ann tell you to not pay your rent or mortgage. That's not what's on. <laughs> um, I, just, like, keep on track with the essentials. We're really focusing on non-essentials with this, this detox. Yeah. Making uh, meals at home um, and, and your drinks at home, a uh, great opportunity for savings and that money mindset transformation. Using what food and drinks uh, you have in your fridge and your pantry before going shop- shopping. That's key. I, I love this because I think that the sign of a good spending detox is like a near empty pantry, near empty fridge and near empty storage. What that tells me is that you went into your reserves, if you will, and you use them up. And like, I'm guilty of it too. When there's a good deal, sometimes I buy two or three toothpaste or whatever, and you end up kind of brewing an inventory here. The idea is to like minimize, use it up. And so here's a little pro tip. When I go into my cupboards and my fridge and I see something that maybe not sure how to use it. I I go into chat GPT and I ask chat GPT to help me with a recipe that uses, I don't know, like a rutabaga or parsnips or like whatever landed up in my fridge, probably because my mother brought it over. Like whatever that is, I got to go. And like, I, I am like a busy mom. So I don't sometimes have those creative recipe ideas that like just percolate naturally. I got to get a little prompter to help yeah. me along the way. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm in the same boat. You talked uh, about uh, seeing what subscriptions you can cancel and negotiate what plans you're locked into as well. That's right. So everything from your home and auto insurance to the internet and cable or alarm services that you have to the memberships that you belong to, maybe fitness memberships, beauty and makeup memberships, gaming memberships. What do you need? What can go? Because if you actually renegotiate or cancel these, not only will it produce savings for you this week that you do your detox, in perpetuity, you are going to see benefit in your entire budget for 2024. So I actually think, um, go line by line here, if you're looking at how to do this, like go into your checking account, into your credit card account, see what you've got as a recurring membership or recurring expense and get on the phone. Sometimes it takes five minutes. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes, but your ask is, uh, you know, can I get a better deal? Is there a different way for me to, to use this service? Yeah. I've done that with, uh, with some of my, uh, with some of my plans and you'd be surprised. Like every once in a while you do get somebody that's really going to help you and say, Oh yeah, you don't need to be paying that uh, or, or that much for this. We've got a new deal for this and you could get even more with that. So it doesn't hurt to ask. We talked about this over the, the holidays uh, as well. And, and in terms of like uh, Black Friday and looking forward to, to Boxing Day, uh, impulse spending. Uh, you might want to throw things into your cart when you're online shopping, but then walk away for 24 hours and see how you feel. That's right. So that I call it the powerful pause. 24 hours is about enough time to like do a, a real gut check and a factual assessment 
of whether or not you need something. When it's shorter than that, sometimes you will just go ahead and buy on impulse. And this is where I see a lot of my students, you know, cave, they do buy the thing. And then my advice is go back to the store, return it. Yeah. The 24 hour pause though is, is awesome. It is, re- it's like full of reflection. It will save you a bundle. And if you have something in your cart, you're like about to hit buy, take whatever money that was $75, $90, put it into your savings account. Cause that's where you're going to build up your savings from your efforts this week. Yeah. And, I, and I've told you about uh, my propensity for uh, buying baseball caps. And right. so I'll go and that's my that's my uh, I don't know vice or whatever, but that's something that I get pleasure out of. And I'll go online and I'll see, oh, this hat that was forty dollars is now twenty nine. All right, I'll put it in the cart and then I'll go back the next day and I'll go. Eh, I don't need to spend twenty nine dollars on that. Or Leslie and sometimes I'll say, oh, look at that hat. It's, it's on sale. I'm going to put that in my cart. And then I'll, I'll, I'll leave it for this 24 hour period. And during those 24 hours, I'll go up to my closet and I'll say, well, I'm going to look through my hats and see what I have. I've already bought that hat. I already Correct. have it. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. Right. <laughs> like, great. Awesome. And it's, it's in great condition as well. Uh, gift cards, using them up points and anything you would have pre-purchased as well. That's right. So the idea is like, Leave no stone unturned. If you've got money or store credit, use it for those essential items. Again, you know, the, I, the, the vision for this week is for essentials only. Yeah. And if you can leverage, especially like grocery and gas points right now, where most people are feeling the pinch, use it for those things. So the other, the other thing I see are uh, really successful with my student community. And also when I do my challenge is I use this week to purge. I purge things. I sell things. Um, You know, just yesterday I sold a cell phone that I am not using and it was like $125. Wow. Instantly into, um, into my wallet for this no spending challenge. And I go room by room. I purge. I look for things that are not, you know, useful. And it sometimes is the case that you purge and you find that you can't sell something. See if you can donate it. Yeah, See, and totally. If you can't donate it, then dispose of it. But like, clear the clutter. That will help reduce anxiety, but it'll also like, you know, make you feel pretty good about this year. It was the best part of my holiday vacation. There's a couple of rooms I have in the house, my laundry room, my cold room, where I just kind of bury things in the back, and I went yeah. through them, and I got through. I got rid of so much stuff through donations and, and stuff that just wasn't useful anymore. Uh, so it just felt really good to get that stuff out of the house at the end of your detox spending week. You're going to see the savings and you could use it for paying off debts, for building emergency funds and for making RRSP contributions. So this money could be really, really useful. Absolutely. You know, assess your needs. What is the most top priority for you and and put it towards that? Like, I don't think it's worth blowing all this money on like a new pair of shoes. I would put it towards your financial yeah. wellness so that you feel really, really good about your efforts. It's just like if you were to do a fitness challenge, the goal is to do your workouts and prove how your body is feeling and, you know, complement it with uh, some healthy eating and things like that. It's just about being mindful about this money and putting it to good work. And when you're done, you are going to feel so amazing. Yeah, you might find yourself uh, being a new you, a more financially responsible. That's right. Check out mevest.ca. Personal finance expert, me, Vest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie Ann Scorgie. Leslie Ann, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.